Hey all, it's Vinny Kung here, aka VTK, and I'm presenting to you today my 2022 F-150 Lightning. Now, a lot of you guys have asked me about what it's like to drive it, own it, experience it, and for the past five weeks, it has been fantastic, and I want to give you a quick glimpse into what makes this truck so different and some details that you probably never thought you would see on an electric pickup truck. Now, I got to be honest, about a year and a half ago when I put my deposit on here, I did not think that Ford would deliver a truck like this. And man, is it amazing. Now, why did I go with an electric pickup truck? Well, I can't get one otherwise. Nobody makes one except for now Rivian and, of course, the Cybertruck, which I've been waiting for for a while, has not come. But Ford is the first to deliver, in my opinion, the best-looking, most useful, and most powerful in the real world electric four-wheel drive pickup truck that anyone can take home. Now, obviously, there have been lots of stories about what dealers have been doing, what Ford themselves have been doing to prevent people from buying them and gouging customers and having a bad overall experience. So they have to say they've done an amazing job, and my experience has been great. Loaded with tech, you can see everything from park distance control, LED lighting everywhere, and there's not a single incandescent or fluorescent bulb, which <laughs> obviously you wouldn't want on an electric truck because you're buying tech. Now, the other pickup trucks on the market offer more power, and I'm sure they're just as unique and interesting. But, I mean, when it comes down to it and you want to own an electric vehicle that has the support of a real dealership network, that's what it really comes down to. That's why I chose this Ford. Now, there are some features on here which you see on the normal trucks, but as you can see, I'm zooming in. There are some items like cameras, 360 view, uh interesting things like door handles. So all four have the remote access for locking, unlocking with uh, the keyless feature. It's an Oxford white. I did get the factory pro tow package as well. And that allows you to get everything such as onboard scales and then the pro trailer backup assist. There are a lot of features and details that I don't know too much about. What I can tell you though, that is that in the real world, it really helps when you're using it. And with my experience of my other F-150s, gas versions, of course, an 18 and a 21, it all comes together on this 22. And little surprises like that. F-150 logos, the lightning wording that is brilliant blue over a black face. It just looks so subtle, but at the same time, also very powerful. This is ordered with the off-road tires, which are by Hankook. And they don't really look off-roady, but I guess the regular tires are truly EV tires that are low rolling resistance and not off-road rated. The interior carries over a lot of stuff from the regular F-150. And we have leather seating surfaces, heated and cooled bucket seats, dual pane sunroof, and everything else that you normally get in this cab. But the biggest thing is that portrait orientation touchscreen First seen on the Mustang Mach-E, it really integrates a lot of the tech, and it actually looks and feels very usable. A lot of the things that are also interesting include different, like, sheet metal. So, like, the bed is different, the front end is different, the fenders, of course, and the charge ports there. But once you get inside, everything's very familiar. So this is what I love about this truck. You can actually sit in it and feel at home. You have the screens in front of you, the buttons just like you're always used to, but shortcuts throughout the screen allow you to access functions and features. Utility comes at a huge, huge advantage for me, and for me that's important because five people can sit comfortably, the bottom of the rear bench folds up, you get extra storage, a flat floor like the regular F-150. It's just the only big difference, of course. There's no engine or fuel tanks, and underneath you got a big electric battery pack. The screen itself in front of you gets into all kinds of menus. Trip 1, Trip 2, driver assistance while you're driving. You can see if there are cars in front of you. And this menu is accessed through the right side steering wheel control buttons. Right now, about 80% charge. I have 235 miles of range, but I've seen as much as two, excuse me, 321 miles on a charge. Power distribution, this is pretty cool. You get to see both motors how much they're putting out and charging back, seat belts that are engaged. And then if you look at other things like the towing feature, this is my favorite area. You get information such as your 
trailer light status, towing status, pitch, brake gain for the brake controller. Now, moving to the radio and HVAC controls, the bottom half of the screen has an uh, actual knob, but around it, everything is a touchscreen. You want max AC? Go right into the menu, push that button. You want e-heat so that the heat warms you up electrically? That's also here as well. On the main menu, you can go into the factory navigation, which works really darn well, and it's got charge points all located in the map, so when it knows you're getting low on range, it'll get you to your next charging station. Full 360 view camera can be accessed in this menu as well. All the other trailer controls and displays are redundant here. Smart hitch can be accessed. And one of the coolest things ever, onboard scales. Who else has this? I'm not too sure, but I think Ford may be the first here to make it so easy to see. I got nothing in the bed right now. So as you can see, I have just a little bit of weight from me in there. <laughs> Surprise it's not maxed out. Ha, ha, ha. All right. So this feature, the zone lighting. If you guys have ever used this on a new F-Series truck, this is where all the LEDs can be lit up and you can control the zones front, back, left, and right, or all together. Power on board. So you have outlets in the front and back. That tells you your system status. And then parking. This has automatic self-parking too. It'll go into a parallel parking spot when you hold the button down. Apple CarPlay, I mean, what car doesn't have it, right? It's one of the most important things to have these days. And my favorite radio stations pull up like they normally do, too. And Waze, my favorite tra uh, traffic information and navigation app, pops up right here as well. Wireless charging station. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but in a pickup truck, it's pretty awesome to have. And the shifter folds down. You've seen this before. This is the workspace table. That folds out, and you can put your laptop there, or for me, a cheeseburger and fries. <laughs> Fold it back up, and then when you're done, go ahead, put the shifter right into drive, and let's go for a ride. So it's kind of hard to explain what it's like when you take off in this thing from a dead stop. Uh, uh, I've done drag racing. I've had a lot of fun on the street and so forth, but this is so different. You can't really whole shot it. You can't spool it up. There's no power braking. You just turn off the traction control, take a deep breath, wait for the light to change, and then you hang on. All right, you heard those front tires squealing for all their, uh, <laughs> all their life over there. So what happens is with traction control off, it will give full current to the motors, allowing you to accelerate. The rear end squats down, the front end picks up, and the front tires of your herd claw for traction. With traction control on, I've tried it the other way, it just allows the front tires to squeak a little bit, but it won't let it do what it did here. I have to note though, torque steer is very noticeable, but this thing boogies. All right, thanks for checking it out, guys. Talk to you soon.